Hey everybody, welcome to the uh, first episode of the Picture Monk podcast. My name is Jordan Yance and I am the, uh, the main blogger at PictureMonk.com. Um, and uh, PictureMonk.com is basically just a website to help uh, beginning and uh, intermediate photographers uh, build their skills, um, whether you know it's just with uh, taking the photos, uh, settings on the camera, or you know editing. Um, it's basically a, a, I try to I try to think of it as an A to Z sort of situation for um, getting just killer photos. Um, so, uh, like I said, that's at PictureMonk.com if you want to go check that out. Um, so let me give you a little introduction about me before we get started here. Um, my name is Jordan Yance, and I have been doing photography uh, seriously since around 2007. That's when I, you know, I, I got my first real DSLR um, and started taking photos and, and really getting in there and learning how to get these professional shots that uh, other photographers were getting that I saw. Um, I, I don't know why I went right to photography to do that. Uh, I've kind of always had like a creative side to me. Um, and, and that's why I went to, uh, to school to become a graphic designer. Uh, and that really helps, helps out when I'm, you know, thinking about a, a photo that I want to, that I want to take. Um, I, I primarily do landscape photography. Um, I have done a couple weddings and a couple portrait sessions and stuff, but I, I mainly stick to what, uh, landscape photography. I, I, for some reason, just, you know, visiting a scene and, you know, dissecting it and trying to get the best composition and the best color and the best contrast and everything that really, that really intrigues me. Um, here lately I have been doing uh, real estate photography and, uh, you know, that's kind of a, a different beast, but it's, it's a really nice challenge and, uh, it really helps out when you're trying to, you know, think differently in many different situations. So, um, that's just a little bit about me. Um, and uh, basically, the Picture Monk podcast is basically just be a weekly podcast where I run through uh, a few cool things that I found online, uh, and also answer some uh, some user submitted questions or just general questions that I found that that might help uh, everybody out. So um, let's get into some uh, some news that I found that I wanted to cover for you guys. Um, uh, I've only got a couple stories, but the first thing that I found. Um, was a, a story on CNN that they posted the uh, what's believed to be the oldest surviving photo of a human uh, with a human in the photo, uh, and I'm I'm looking at it right now. And if you wanna if you wanna see what the uh, what the photo is like, just go visit picturemonk.com/podcast1, uh, and that'll get you the uh, the news stories in here, and you can go check them out. Uh, but it's a really really cool photo. Um, kind of a, you know, what you would expect to see. And the, the person in question in the photo, uh, is, is, you know, kind of silhouetted on a, uh, on a city street and, uh, it just looks really kind of cool. And it was believed to be taken in 1838, which is, that's, uh, it's, it's crazy to think about. So, um, go check that out. That thought that was a really cool, cool story to mention. Um, and the also, uh, also the other thing that I found that I thought was really neat was, uh, is a video, um, that I actually found a long time ago, but just came across it again, was a picture that, uh, YouTube user, uh, Peter, uh, Bellinger photo, I believe that's how you say it. So Peter Bellinger photo, he posted a video of how, uh, Macworld, the, the magazine that's, uh, mainly just geared towards, uh, Apple fanboys and, and all that kind of stuff, which I am one of those, um, which, uh, it shows a behind the scenes time lapse of how they take a cover, uh, photo of, uh, for the cover, uh, and a cover of the iPhones for the cover of the, of the Macworld magazine. Uh, and it just goes from beginning to end. So you see, you see them setting up in the studio with all their lights and getting the light, you know, completely perfect to eliminate glare. Um, and then you see them take the file, open it up in Photoshop, do all the retouching, um, mess with color and mess with layout when they get, you know, the, the verbiage on there. Uh, I just thought it was a really, really neat photo. It's not a long one. So you guys can go check that out again, uh, go to picturemonk.com slash podcast one, uh, and you'll see it there. So I just thought those were a couple cool articles that I wanted to run through in, uh, in this little section. So uh, the next thing we're going to get get into are uh, questions that I found online that 
that I've noticed that a lot of people are asking about. Um, and it's basically the three most commonly, uh, commonly asked questions for being beginning photographers. Um, these questions seem to be, you know, every beginning photographer out there seems to have these types of questions. And, and the three here are the, uh, the ones that I've, I've come across that, you know, I, I had when I first started out. So, uh, I figured I would run through these and kind of give you my opinion on them. Uh, the first question is what type of lens should I get when I'm first starting out? Um, and I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of a different thinker, I guess, when it comes to this, because a lot of the photographers that I, you know, I see online and on YouTube, they suggest buying, you know, good glass, getting really good glass, which I do think is, is, uh, you know, very useful. Uh, you know, obviously a, a $100 lens build quality compared to a $3,000 lens, you know, a $3,000 lens is going to win, win hands down. So, um, but the, uh, what, what I think you should do when you're first starting out in photography, um, most likely you bought a, uh, a DSLR with a, you know, a, a, a bundle. So you have like, it came with a lens and a, uh, or the camera body, the lens, the bag, you know, maybe some other little other things like tripods and stuff. Um, but it probably came with what's called a kit lens. And that's, uh, I know for Canon, I'm not sure for Nikon because I, I, I do shoot Canon, but, um, uh, for the Canon, it's, it's when you get a, a entry level DSLR, it's usually an 18 millimeter lens, uh, 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter lens. Um, and to tell you the truth, that is, that is basically the lens that I shot a whole lot of my photos on. The only other lens that I got when I first started out was a telephoto lens. And I honestly didn't use it as much as I thought I would. Um, you know, it came in handy in certain situations, but you know, as a landscape photographer, primarily, you know, you really want those wide shots and, uh, you know, telephoto wasn't going to do that for me. So I really think you can stick with the kit lens that you got. And if you just got the camera body, uh, when you got your new camera, you know, find a good used cheap kit lens off eBay or Craigslist or something. Um, it'll save you money at the beginning. So you can concentrate on learning like settings, uh, composition. You can basically learn the basics. Uh, and, and know how to use your camera and not how to buy a whole bunch of accessories for it. So uh, I would really suggest sticking with the kit lens. Um, and if you want to read an article I wrote about, kin, uh, how, about how kit lenses can, can really help, uh, head on over to picturemonk.com slash kit lens. Uh, and it shows you some pictures that I've, I've taken with my kit lens uh, before I got my new camera. They really hold up well uh, compared to many other photos you see out there that you would think, you know, shot with like Hasselblads or something. Check that out. It's a, you know, it'll really give you some perspective on that. Basically, I'm, I I think kit lenses are really well, they hold up really well and, and you can definitely start out with those and get really, really great shots of those with, you know, getting shots of your kids and everything. Uh, if you're taking, uh, you know, family portraits or anything like that, you're going to get some good photos out of there. Uh, obviously once you grow out of that, you're going to want to, you know, wind up getting more expensive gear, more better build quality gear. But when you're first starting out, that's definitely what you should do. Just stick with that lens and uh, learn your camera from there. Uh, the next question that I uh, hear a lot is how do I get sharp photos? Um, when, you, when they ask, how do you get sharp photos? It's probably a combination of stuff. Um, a lot of things that I've seen on, uh, uh what people recommend are, you know, kind of, kind of edit the sharpness in there. So, you know, if you take a photo and it's a little bit blurry, maybe the focus was off, you know, try to sharpen it up in Photoshop as much as you can and make it look better. Yes, sharpening in Photoshop or Lightroom will help, but uh, you really need to get it right in camera. So if you're first starting out uh, and you have, you have no clue about uh, aperture, expo uh, aperture um, shutter speed or ISO, um, you really want to try to learn how to use, uh, the running man mode, I guess, uh, on your, on your mode dial. It's the little picture of a guy looks like he's sprinting uh, on the back end. What that's, what that's doing is it's showing, it's telling your camera, Hey, I need to get a really fast shutter speed. That's basically what it's saying. And ba y your camera is going to do everything it can to get the fastest shutter speed in that situation. If you are familiar with your camera, uh, and, and you think you can, uh, go to one of the semi manual modes on Canon, you can go to the TV mode and on Nikon, it's the S mode and, um, 
TV stands for time value and S stands for speed. So if you go to that, what you're basically saying is there's a there's a box on there that has a you know one slash number or something like that, um, and that's called the shutter speed. So if you want to get really sharp photos, you basically want to freeze the action, uh, and you don't want there to be any motion blur. Obviously, you want your focus to be spot on. But if you know if you have a fast moving subject, you really need to have the fast uh, fastest shutter speed possible to to freeze that subject. So if you hit a, uh, head on over to um, the TV mode and the S mode, or the S mode, you can basically dial in one one hundredth of a second. Well, it should freeze it a little bit, um, depending on the light. If you're out in bright sunlight and you need to, you know, take pictures of your kids running around, what you can do is just dial in uh, maybe one uh, five hundredth of a second and uh, take a photo from there. And what that's going to do is it's going to freeze the motion really well. So your kid's going to be exactly frozen and your uh, your images are almost guaranteed to be sharp. Granted that you're focusing on the on the right subject, will which you probably will be. Uh, the other thing you can do is, uh, like I was saying before, in Photoshop or Lightroom, if you have any one of those programs, you can add more sharpening to the uh, to the photo. And uh, if you want to see an article I wrote on that, go to PictureMonk.com/sharpen, uh, and it'll give you the exact technique that I use uh, with you know screenshots to help you out. And you can uh, you can go from there, and it's it it. it I basically had a amount of sharpening to all my photos, um, same value every time, and uh, it makes them really, really stand out. So uh, go ahead and check that, check on that article. Uh, the next and the last uh, question that I hear a lot of photographers, beginning photographers ask is, uh, what does raw mean? Because you hear a lot of people say, uh, you know, I shoot in raw, or um, like if you're if you shoot a wedding, you might hear people ask, can I have your raw files? Um, what RAW basically is, is a file format on the camera, whatever camera manufacturer you have. Um, it's the RAW data from the sensor. Let's say you take a photo and you have your camera set to, to JPEG for the output mode of what you're, what you're going to get off of your camera. You're basically getting a compressed file with camera settings that your uh, camera adds to the photo. Um, so it'll add a certain amount of sharpening and add a certain amount of contrast, uh, saturation, stuff like that. Um, what a raw file is, is it's just straight off the camera, barely any, any compression or anything. Um, and you might be thinking why this is beneficial. And this is because what it'll do is when you bring it into a photo editing suite, you can actually, uh, bring out more detail in the photo. So let's say you take a photo of uh, I don't know, maybe uh, your kids at the park or something like that. You get the photo off and it's in the raw format. You may notice that you were a little overexposed, so it's a little bit bright. What you can do is bring that in and drag down your, your exposure or drag down the highlights in your photo, and that'll bring back some of that detail. You can do that to a certain extent with a, with a JPEG file, but it's not going to bring back nearly as much detail as, as you would think. Uh, the raw data is going to still be there in the image. With the JPEG, it's going to be compressed and it's going to be lost. So the uh, when you bring the photo in, you can actually you know move it around a whole lot more than you normally would with any other um, with any other file type. Uh, you can definitely get away with doing JPEG for some things. So uh, for example, if I'm you know if I'm at a family gathering or something like that. I'm probably not going to want these photos to be, you know, extremely professional. I'm basically using it as an archival thing. You know, I want to document my my family and, you know, that kind of thing. I'll probably go ahead and switch to JPEG, and that's just for convenience sake because I don't want to go home and have to drag in, you know, 150 images and edit, a, edit them all, you know, when they're just going to be for me and, you know, my family. So I uh, will switch to JPEG, but remember to switch back to RAW when you're doing a professional thing like a wedding or a portrait session. Uh, anything like that. So uh, those are the three basic questions that I hear from a lot of uh, a lot of beginning photographers out there, and uh, I hope that helped you guys. Uh, so I'm basically going to uh, just go ahead and sign off here, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to visit uh, PictureMonk.com, uh, like us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest. I'm, I'm everywhere. YouTube. Uh, head on over to PictureMonk.com. There's usually a uh, video posted every Monday a blog post every Wednesday, and a freebie, what I call Friday freebie, every Friday where I give away some photography resource to uh, for, for free to, for anybody to download. 
so head on over to that. This week, actually, I just gave away, um, this past week, I gave away two Lightroom presets. So uh, if you have Lightroom, go ahead and download. They're for free, uh, so you're not, it's not hurting anything. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of the Picture Monk Podcast. Uh, this is Jordan Yance, and I will see you guys in the next episode.